Hi guys, Zal here. It's been a while since I made the last video after a month of travel, injury, etc. But here I am in the new year and to start things off I just want to do another video going over your comments that you've left on a variety of previous videos. A lot of these comments have some good insights that I think will be helpful to everyone and hopefully interesting. So. I'm just going to go through each of the comments together and hopefully make a, a fun video where maybe you'll learn about some chemistry or stuff about the chemistry degree or just stuff about me. So with that, let's hop right into it. And our first comment is from Dan Houston 2715 which says, I have many buckets of roofing silicone. They are old and expired. I tested one and it will not cure. Is there any way to add something to it to activate it somehow? Like, is just all toast and wasted or can the curing agent be turned back on? So there are a few different ways to cure silicones. There are uh, catalyst ways, which you have something like a platinum catalyst in your silicone that will cause it to cure and uh, more commonly for stuff like bathroom home applications are silicones that actually cure through ambient humidity like the water in the air and there are different types of those there are neutral alkaline and acidic based ones and that's just a bit of their mechanism of how they cure you can actually tell like if you have an acidic based silicone it might smell a bit like vinegar because one of the byproducts of that is acetic acid or acetate. That being said, it's pretty common that certain types of silicones, especially in these applications, will not cure at a certain point. And there probably is some way to find a curing agent, etc., or do something to cause it to cure, but it's not straightforward or easy. I don't even know how it would be done. It would depend on the specific type of silicone there is because uh, like in my video about silicones, there's a whole different slew of different types of silicones with different properties and it's probably a total pain to figure out how that's going to work for whatever specific like roofing silicone you have depending on what the formulation is. And even then it might not work properly because these manufacturers do have very specific guidelines of like probably what they've put in their own formulations and that's what's giving it the properties that they're advertising so I'd probably recommend just getting new silicone because it's probably going to be more trouble than it's worth to figure out how to reuse the silicone and get it to cure. Our second comment user MG7HB2JD5T can you work at NASA? Well, that would be a great job. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I don't know if I've mentioned it before, I love everything to do with aerospace, flying airplanes, rockets, everything. So working at NASA or, you know, you know, the dream job would be like someone piloting the space shuttle. Um, uh, yeah, you can even see on my display, I've got all those space models back there. So anything to do with flying aerospace would be, would be a great job. So hit me up NASA. The next comment on our chemistry job postings be like video by J Baldwin 3012. I like when the salary is lower middle class but they want someone with a PhD in chemistry, 10 years of experience, and is willing to lead a team of people. LOL, I'm always like who are these doctors who qualify and will lead for 50k? Yeah, exactly. I think there are some crazy job applications and especially with chemistry, maybe not a salary that matches up with the difficulty of the degree, which is why a lot of chemists go into different fields. And I do love the chemistry degree. And it, I think one of the big strengths of chemistry is it is a great launching point for a lot of different fields. If you want to go into any sort of different STEM or even professional school like being a doctor or veterinarian, etc. It's a great launching point and it's just great at like showing you the fundamentals of science in the world because it does draw from a lot of different STEM subject areas. But I also wish that those jobs would pay more. It's pretty ridiculous that someone would go all the way to a PhD and hardly get paid for it. On my video about hydrogen and uh, its kind of aspect as a clean fuel, uh, 
Nescon STO5 commented, I just hope in the near future our leaders would somehow make an investment on electrolysis. Although it's quite expensive, uh, but I also believe that only when leaders think of what's best, what's efficient, and finding more of an economic friendly way to sustain our society today, and only we can push the government to push this kind of implementation and have its own budget. I agree on making hydrogen as an alternative way or option to petroleum, but only when there is electrolysis applied. And thank you so much for this information, Zal. P.S. English is not my first language. Well, uh, your English sounded great in this comment, and um, I'm glad you liked the video. And I totally agree. Hydrogen, if it's not coming from electrolysis, is basically just another fossil fuel that's coming from cracking methane, basically. And I, I think an investment in electrolysis would be great, especially if you get something like nuclear or massive solar farms that are pumping the electricity to run the electrolysis, which you can just run on seawater. And I, I do think that would be a great use of any investment because um, there are some issues with battery power and electric vehicles and kind of charging times and although there has been a lot of progress into it I think with a lot of things in like especially with like semiconductors or battery power you're going to get diminishing returns. Mewish Batool 7444 comments, Hi Zal, can't thank you enough for creating such great comment. I'm switching my major to chemistry. Do you recommend taking analytical chemistry one or go to an inorganic chemistry one in one semester since I've completed the core requirements so I don't have many options left? I will say that is going to be a pretty crazy schedule. It depends how hard your school runs those classes and the only way you can figure that out is by talking to other chemistry majors who've taken those classes. I will say that it's a lot of work especially with like I know analytical chem and orgo both usually have labs and taking all three of those classes is going to be a lot of work. Analytical chemistry wasn't as bad at least for me compared to orgo and inorganic for the amount of work you have to put in but some of the analytical labs can be really rough so it really depends if you're if any of the other classes you're taking this semester are also difficult on top of your chem classes i wouldn't do it it's going to be a really tough semester even if you have like easier classes as your other classes that semester but it's possible but very difficult so you, you are warned you're going to be Putting a lot of time in. I've got a comment from Menorit Panu. I did an associate's degree in science chemistry major. What kind of job should I opt for? Do you have any idea? With an associate's degree there's a lot of like lab tech or manufacturing jobs that you can get with a chemistry degree. Um, I know there's some in like makeup, food, etc. but in general like lab tech or industry factory jobs are what I've seen will hire associate's degree. So maybe look for that type of job. The Sauces Magan Like Me says, wasn't hard for me to find a job. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a BS in chemistry, and now I'm a veterinarian for Banfield. Vet school was easy to apply because my STEM degree. Yeah, as I said earlier, chemistry is a great launching point for other like professional degrees or training because it does have such a wide scope from different biology subjects to physics subjects. So with a chemistry bachelor's degree, you can launch into anything. And like a lot of people will do stuff like this, go into vet school or medical school and whatever they're interested in. Justin Humphrey 153 says, I'm an undergrad chemistry major. Questions, what are the most important things for a resume such as GPA, research, internship, prior job experience, school ranking? Um, to answer that part of your comment first, uh, I think one of the most important things on a resume is going to be uh, prior job experience if you've worked a specifically like a uh, chem job they're not gonna really care as much if it's like you've worked a retail job gotten a chem degree and now are applying to science jobs on top of uh, under that there's gonna be stuff like research and internships those are also great because they fall into a similar vein of you what have you actually done what skills do you have in lab because that's what you're gonna be doing when you're actually working these jobs and I'd say GPA actually falls under it. Unless your GPA is terribly bad or absolutely amazing, I don't think it's going to make as much of a difference as the other things. 
Um, and school ranking, it can depend. One of the biggest things about schools is their networking and career centers, but um, most of the time, like having actual research and job experience will supersede some of these other things. Next, are you job search limited to the area around you? Are you willing to travel? Next, can you DM me your college's global ranking based on the Shanghai ranking system? I am currently job searching around where I am geographically limited. That being said, I'm in an area that has pretty good availability of jobs. And um, after that, I'm not sure the Shanghai ranking system, I've never used or looked at it, but I did go to a top 50 US news school um, for the US ranking systems. I'm not really sure how international ranking sounds stands up. Well, thank you guys. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. If you also want to comment and you have your own questions you want to ask me, I'll try to respond to them if you just leave a comment down below. And I hope this was valuable to you, and I'll see you guys next time.